Welcome to the seventh lecture in general topology. The topics that we'll explore in this lecture include the empty union, a basis for a given topology, a topology generated by a basis, and the digital line topology. Okay, so we will begin this lecture by uh, looking at one of the uh, exercises that was set in the previous one. So first recall that a proper subset of a given space X is dense in that space if and only if for every non-empty open subset U of the space X, the intersection of that non-empty open set with the set A is not empty. That is, every non-empty open uh, set has at least one point in common with the given set A. So as an exercise, I asked you to determine the validity of the following conjecture. If a given proper subset A of a space X is nowhere dense, in the space, then for every non-empty proper open subset U of X, the intersection of that non-empty proper open set with the set A is empty. So in other words, uh, this conjecture is asking, if a given set is nowhere dense, does this mean that it is a set for which every uh, open set, distinct from the entire space, has no points in common with the given set A? And the answer is no, as we will now show with uh, a counterexample. So let the underlying set have a cardinality greater than 2. Let the topology on this set be the particular point topology. With a specified point P. And let a point X be a point which is distinct from the point P. And let this be a point N the space X, then the singleton containing this point is nowhere dense in the space. However, the two-point set containing this point X and the point P is a non-empty proper open subset of the space X, and it is a proper subset since the cardinality of the uh, underlying set is greater than two, it must contain at least one point that is different from the two in this uh, set, but uh, this is a non-empty proper open subset of the uh, space X such that the intersection of the set with the singleton set containing the point X, which is a nowhere dense set, is the singleton containing that point, and so is not empty. And so uh, it, if a given set is nowhere dense, this does not mean that it is a set for which uh, every open set distinct from the uh, entire set has no points in common with it. So an equivalent statement uh, that a given set is dense if and only if uh, every non-empty uh, open set in the space has at least one point in common with it is the contrapositive of that statement. And so that is the statement that a proper subset A of a given space X is not dense in the space 
if and only if there exists at least one non-empty open subset u of x such that the intersection of this uh, non-empty open set with the set A is empty. So is a nowhere dense set a set that is not dense? The, uh, yes, it is. Uh, suppose that the set B, the proper subset B of the space X is nowhere dense. in the space, then the uh, interior of the closure of that set is the empty set, and so the closure of that set cannot be the entire space as the interior of the entire space is the entire space, and hence the uh, nowhere dense set B is not dense. in the space. But it is more, uh, a nowhere dense set is more than simply a set that is not dense. It is one for which uh, the only open set contained in its closure is the empty set. So uh, as we saw from the previous lecture, the uh, complement of a nowhere dense set is always a dense set, and the complement of a dense set is a uh, a nowhere dense set only if uh, that set is an open set. Okay, so let's move on. Let the set containing the sets a sub i for i and some indexing set i be an indexed family. of subsets of a given set X. Recall that the arbitrary union is the set containing points that are in the set A sub I for at least one index i in the indexing set so if the indexing set is the set of positive integers we have a countable union And that union is usually expressed as the union from i equals 1 to infinity of the sets a sub i. And this is still the set of all those points, such that the point is in a set a sub i for at least one. Index i in the indexing set, which is the set of positive integers. Now, if the indexing set is a subset of the positive integers, we will use the set containing the elements 1, 2, and so on, up to some positive integer n we have a finite union and so this union is the union 
from index i equals 1 to n of a sub i. And we usually simply represent this as a sub 1 in a union with a sub 2 and so on up to the union with a sub n. Now there are two degenerate cases of a finite union. Case one is when the indexing set is a singleton set, and here we'll use uh, the singleton set containing the element one, but more generally, uh, any singleton set as the indexing set. We have that the union over this index is a single element in the uh, family of sets. Case two is when the indexing set is the empty set. And here, the once again, the arbitrary union over any index of an index family of sets is the set of those points in the set A sub i for at least one index i. Now since there does not exist an index in the empty set, a point, a given point is not in a set A sub i for any index i in the indexing set, which is the empty set in this case. And so the union over this index, the index indexing set rather being the empty set is the empty set and this degenerate case is called the empty union So now we're ready to give the definition for a basis for a given topology. So let the set X together with some topology tau be a topological space. A basis for the topology is a subcollection which we denote script B of the topology such that every element in the topology is a possibly empty union of some elements in the collection script B. That is a basis script B is a collection Containing B sub i for i in some indexing set i. So a collection of open subsets, as it is a subset of the topology, it contains uh, open sets, open subsets of the space X, such that for every open subset, U of X. There, ex there exists a subset J 
of the indexing set i such that that open set u is a union over the index j of the elements b sub j. This is just a more precise way of stating that every open set is a union of some basis elements. So uh, clearly, the topology tau can be its own basis. But often we will be much more interested in a proper subset of the topology uh, that is a basis for the topology. Now a basis is sometimes called a base, the elements in a basis are called basis elements. Base elements or basic open sets. Okay, so next we'll prove a lemma. Let x together with some topology tau be a topological space. And let the set A be a subset of the space X. If the set A is contained in its interior, then the set A is open. If the closure of the set A is contained in the set A, then the set A is closed. Notice that these are weaker statements than the uh, statements that the set A is open if and only if it is equal to its interior, and a set A is closed if and only if it is equal to its closure. So proof. First statement. Suppose that A is a subset of the space X such that the set A is contained in its interior. Then, since it is always true that the interior of the set A is a subset of the set A, we have that A is equal to its interior since we now have set inclusion in both directions. And hence, the set A is open. So second statement. Suppose that the set A is a subset of the space X such that the closure of A is contained in the set A. Then, since it is always true that a given set is a subset of its closure, we now have set inclusion in both directions so that the set A is equal to its closure. And hence, the set A is closed.